There we go. And that looks about perfect to me. A spool and nut reels are one of those jobs that needs to be done, but no one ever really wants to do them. I don't think I know anyone that enjoys doing the job, whether you be at every start of the season, getting a new set of line on there, or uh, like me, unfortunately, having to spool up probably dozens and dozens of reels every year because I'm filming so many. So as you can imagine, I try and find the most efficient way to de-spool reels and spool them back out. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to de-spool a reel in my method. There's lots of other different methods. So of course, comment down below your preferred method of uh, de-spooling and spooling reels. If you've got any other tips that I don't include in this video, because of course this is a personal preference thing. A lot of people have different methods, but I'm gonna show you the way that I do it and I've always had good results. So to start off with, let's de-spool a reel. So de-spooling, I've got my reel here. I could take the spool completely off the reel if I like, or I can leave it on there, but I find it a little bit easier to take the spool completely off. Then you don't run any risk of line getting caught on anything else when you're uh, using my method of taking the line off. So unscrew like so. Had to be an extremely long screw, didn't it? There we go. So pop that to the side. And this is also a good chance to uh, give your reels a bit of TLC, re-grease them up and whatnot. There you are, there's my spool ready to be de-spooled. And I'll just use it power tools just because less effort for me as a very efficient way of doing it. So get the little tag end of line. And start to pull it off and then put it onto the bit of bog roll. I should explain that first actually. So an old bog roll, just the inner, and attach that to a battery powered drill like so. So it uh, spins on there. A bit of tape to hold it in place. And then get a little bit more tape. Take your tag end of line, attach it to the bog roll, and away you go. Start off slowly, so make sure it's not slipping. And there you go. Now it's worth noting, I'm just guiding the line, giving a bit of pressure on there so it doesn't fly everywhere. Don't grip onto it, because that will burn you. <laughs> Whilst doing this as well, make sure you keep an eye on the spool, that you're not getting right down to the bottom, because the last thing you want to do is to keep on having this on full whack, reach the bottom of the spool, and then the spool's going flying or hitting anything. So keep an eye on that. There we are, nearly at the bottom of the spool, just slowing down. There we go. There we are, I'm down to the bottom of the spool, and that was, I'm not gonna have to check time stamp, I'm sure that was about a minute, if that, to uh, completely de-spool a reel. Now what I've got to do is trim that off. Get a little bit more tape, just to hold it in place. And we're done. One de-spooled reel and all my line is kept nice and neat. Now, the best thing you can do about this is recycle it. So don't just put that straight in the bin. You've got a nice and easy to uh, dispose of that. So take it to your nearest tackle shop where uh, you can recycle your line because there's a great um, company out there now that recycles your line and reuses it into other things. So long gone are the days where you waste all this or it ends up in landfill where it doesn't rot down, you can uh, recycle it. So simple as that, if you keep just two or three uh, bog rolls, the uh, innards of those over uh, a week or so, when you know you're about to spool up your reel, you can do that on each reel. You could do multiple reels on one spool, but you do find it starts to crumple down the uh, bog roll a bit too much. But as simple as that. So it would be a case of just trimming that little bit of uh, tape, pulling that spool off, and we're good to go. Now for the slightly laborious task of spooling up your reels. Obviously it takes a lot more time if you've got three massive big bits, but thankfully today I've just got the uh, little extractor reel I've just de-spooled and ready to re-spool, and this little insurgent reel from Sonic as well. So nice and small reels, it's like kind of mini big pits. So uh, they still hold quite a good amount of line, but it's not gonna be like I'm here all day cranking hundreds and hundreds of meters of line onto uh, a big bit. But uh, nonetheless, the principles of how I spool up stays the same. So to start with, attach your reel to the butt section of a rod. This just makes you have a lot more control holding the rod like you naturally would. And when I was younger, I used to spool up reels, not realizing this trick and putting your line through the top eye. And I'd be there trying to keep tension on the line. Often it was a, a me and a mate job to spool up reels. Do it like this and uh, there's no need to have anyone else help you out doing it. It's a lot more controlled. The line comes in naturally to the reel and we'll get onto that in a second. So that makes things a lot easier. Next up, you wanna have a bucket of water that you put your line in and a, a wet rag. So I've just got an old microfiber cloth from car cleaning. 
keep that damp and that's what gives you the uh, grip on the rod to give a bit of friction when you're spooling the line on and it just stops everything from drying out as you're doing it. But before all that, you need to prep your line. So with me today, I've got some uh, new line from Sonic. It's called the Subsonic line. Now the line I'm gonna use today, as you can see, is sat in a uh, tub of water. Now it's been in here for about 24 hours and it's recommended that you soak your line before you spool it up because monofilaments, um, fluorocarbons, I think it might be slightly different with braid, obviously it takes on a certain amount of water. So if you have it soaked in water to start with, it's gonna soak up to its, its biggest extent, which is what you'd expect when you're out fishing because if you spooled that up bone dry, one, it's gonna be a bit more difficult to spool up, but two, once that line starts to take on water on your session, you may have previously had a, a maxed out spool when it was dry and then you find you can't get all the line back on because it's slightly expanded. So by soaking it beforehand, you don't have the risk of having too much line on your spool when you get to a fishing situation. Again, I've been there, it's not fun. But uh, worth noting the line that I just said. So Sonic, I just brought out a new line. This is the Subsonic range. It comes available in three different colors and uh, I think five different braking strains. So you've got green, which is the one I'm gonna go for. It's often what I, uh, my preference for uh, fishing, but there's also a brown and a camo. Now the camo is like a, a couple different flecks of colors that so should break up in the water a bit more. So completely down to personal preference. It's nice and supple off the uh, spool is what I've noticed so far as well high abrasion resistance, but its main selling point, I believe, well, there's two really, but the first one is its strength to diameter rating. Now, normally I use 15 pound line, that's kind of my go-to wherever I go, nice and strong, but I'm always looking around, typically around the 0.38 sort of mark, some 15 pounds are even pushing towards the 0.40, some slightly less. The strength of diameter ratings of this line is pretty incredible. So if I just rattle through them, you've got the 12 pound uh, breaking strains, so a few fish venues where you're allowed to use lighter diameter, a bit more uh, smaller fish or fish a bit more finicky, then you can go down to the 12 pounds. It's still a good breaking strain, but you're looking at a 0.28 millimeter. So less than 0.3 is pretty incredible. And now the 15 pound, that's what I typically use. And as I just said, I, I'm normally used to seeing around the 0.36 to 0.40 mark for a, a 15 pound line, just 0.31 with a 15 pound breaking strain on this. And then you've got the 18 pound, 0.35 which again is kind of what I'd expect for a 15 pound, and even the 22 pound is a 0.38, which is still not even at the 0.40s, even all the way up to 22 pound, and they max out at 25 pound at 0.41. So I think you'll agree, the strength diameter ratings on that are pretty impressive. And the next thing that's nice and impressive is that the spools come in 1200 meter uh, spools, so if you've got a set of three reels, you don't have to get two lots of these because sometimes spools just aren't quite enough 1200 meters of this obviously you'll have to take a look at the diameter ratings and how much your reel will take to the diameter but uh yeah you've got 1200 meters of the single or the smaller spool ones and you could also pick up a 3000 meter bulk spool so if you've got a lot of setups to uh sort out or you like to change your line quite frequently this may be the option you want to go for and price wise the 1200 meter spools comes in at just 14.99, which again is extremely impressive. Most times you go to the tackle shop now and look at bulk spools of line or this sort of size line, you're looking upwards of 20 quid per spool, so it does add up. And then the bulk spool, the 3000 meters worth, comes in at 34.99, so that's a great save. And if you go for the bulk spool option, you've got plenty of line left in your shed ready to spool up the following year as well. That's enough about the line, time to actually start spooling up. So as I said, this line has been soaking now for about 24 hours, which is as they recommend on it. So it's soaked up a nice amount of water, take it out of there. Now, often different reels have diff uh, different lines, sorry, have different methods of spooling them up. Luckily, this one has written on the box how they recommend you spool it up, and that's with the label facing up. So some re reels, it spins off like this, others it got to be upside down. To be honest, they all seem to differ. So grind on a few spools of uh, line and see how the line's going on. If it's all twisted, then change the method you're putting it on. But we're gonna try out the uh, way that they're saying to start with. So I'm gonna put it in this bucket of water here so that the label faces upwards, like so. I'll take my uh, damp rag out, just rinse it out slightly. Put that to the side so that that's ready in a second. Now onto the rod and reel setup. The idea of having the rod is that, like I said, it's got a bit more uh, stability and control over what you're doing. Thread the line through the butt eye on the rod and bring it down towards the reel. Now with the reel, I find it's easiest to make sure that the spool is at its most extended, like so, so that when you put the line on, your 
knot and everything is at the very bottom of the spool. So that's now opened up, ready? And the knot I use, I'm not actually entirely sure of the name of it, I'm terrible with knot names, but uh, hopefully you can see from the close-up, one large loop, one smaller loop, and then put the tag end through both loops. Someone's gonna put in the comment section exactly what the name of this knot is. Pull the smaller loop tight, and what you'll find is there's a little knot pinching the bigger loop. And as you pull the tag end and the main bit of line, that loop gets smaller. So get it to about the size you want to fit over the spool. Once that's done, put the line over the spool, or that loop, sorry, and pull it down nice and tight. So it all beds in. Now this spool has little ridges that the line slots into, so that's as tight as I can get it. But that's not always completely gripped onto the spool. So trim off that little tag end, and I get my little bit of tape that I've been using already. Just a little bit of black insulation tape is all I've ever used. I've never had any issues. And just take that bit of tape, cover the knot. So one, it's not gonna get caught on any other bits of line, but also that just gives it enough grip so that it doesn't slide about when I'm putting the first few lines of, uh, first few turns of line on. So just do the first few lightly by hand. It starts to pinch down the tape and we're good to go. This is where the rag comes in. So because my line's coming off nice and wet, I want to keep it wet, but I still want a bit of uh, tension on it. So just a wet rag, hold that against the rod, and then put the bucket of water with the line in just below the butt eye, so the line's going directly up. Make sure it starts coming off neatly. And we're good to go. Now don't go frantic, you want to watch how this is going onto your spool. Looking good to me so far. I don't know how many that is, about 30 or so turns. Check the line and it's not really coiled. I mean, it's got a slight bit of uh, memory in it, but that's to be expected. That'll come out within a session or so. Keep it going. So it's all coming off nicely. Just keep checking every now and then. Yeah, that's lovely. That's coming off perfect. Again, just keeping that tension on the line with a bit of a uh, wet towel. Just pinching it against the uh, rod itself. Yeah, you won't, don't want to go too mad, because if you uh, need to slow down on that spool still spinning, you'll end up with a bird's nest of line in your bucket of water. There's a perfect amount of water in there so that it's not splashing about like mad, but it's spinning nicely. It's coming off the way it's recommended. Just going to slow down again and have another check. As you can see, that's coming down really nice and supple. Perfect, just keep going. You can probably hear the tension I've got on the line as well. Again, just keep assessing how the line's coming off the spool and how it's going onto my main spool. I don't want to fill this up every last micromillimeter of the spool. You want to be just under the lip. So like I said, if you, if you overfill the spool, you'll find that when you're casting out, you might get excess line flying off the spool. I'm getting very close there. In fact, I'm pretty much Let's say 10 more turns. Cool. I think we go down until I reach the bottom of the spool again. And that looks about perfect to me. So then just put it in the clip, trim it off. And there we are. One reel done. Then you're ready on to do the next one simple as that. Now, there's a few other little things to uh, keep in mind when you first go fishing with this. Don't go whacking it as far as you can to the horizon before you start to bed the line in properly. So put a lead on, as long as there's uh, room for you to do it, of course. Start off with a small cast, say, I don't know, 30 yards or so, and then keep progressing up. So as you're doing that, you're getting the line to bed in naturally in a fishing situation. It just gets a bit of the stretch in the line, beds everything in nicely so it, uh, it actually performs as it will in normal sessions. If you go whack it to the horizon straight away without doing all that, you may run into a few issues. It's just something to bear in mind. But as simple as that. So uh, I hope that uh, helped you out on how to de-spool a reel and re-spool a reel nice and neatly. That looks absolutely perfect. And as the sun's just starting to come out, I'm going to uh, get the rest of my kit and head off to the lake, but hopefully put this little setup to the test. <laughs> that was close. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click the like button if you uh, enjoyed it and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any future uploads. And also follow us on all the social media platforms coming up on the bottom of your screen now. But for now, cheers for watching and I'll see you again soon.